Hi friends, good afternoon all of you. Welcome back to CAP Classes. Recently, we have conducted one poll uh, survey in our CAP Classes Telegram channel asking the students what they want to learn from me. So I have given them options like IFRS and accounting standards for intermediate and accounting standards for uh, advanced accounting paper, then CA final papers. And also I have put uh, standards and auditing. Surprisingly, more than 40% of the students requested for classes on standards on auditing. Why I said surprisingly is because I have expected that they will choose IFRS or accounting standards. Then I have asked one of my, uh, you know, very close uh, uh, associates, why, what is the reason why they want to learn standards and auditing? Uh, he said, Pavan sir, it could be because of, it could be, it is just his opinion. There are no good English speaking teachers uh, that are giving good knowledge in auditing. For other papers, there are still options available. Whereas for the subject like auditing, you should have practical exposure. You should have, uh, you know, good understanding of uh, the academic content. You should have good teaching ability. You should teach in English. So uh, faculty satisfying all the criteria is very less. Then maybe I thought, okay, if that is the case, if the students are expecting standards on auditing, let me give that to them. So we are starting with basic uh, standards and auditing. And today I am going to teach you SA230, which is audit documentation. Whenever I speak about audit documentation, first my mind goes to a decided English uh, case law, which is Chantry Martin versus Martin. So it is very interesting to learn it through this. So shall we search? Chantry Martin versus Martin. Yep. Okay. So look here. Chantry versus Chantry Martin versus Martin case. I'm just opening this. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. It is a UK case law. So obviously this website is also UK based website. SWARB.co.uk. Then Chantry Martin versus Martin 1953. So what is this? The professional working papers of a firm of accountants were held not to be the property of the client, but letters and other papers created by accountants as agent for the client were the client's property. Working accounts and other papers which were brought into existence by chartered accountants in the preparation of a final audit of a client's books are the property of accountants and not of the client. So this is the decided case law. This is what we need to read and understand now. So I want all of you to read the content highlighted on the screen once again. Read it very carefully. I'll explain what it is. So point number one, we have to substitute the word auditor for accountants there because this is equally applicable in case of audits also. Probably I have observed in UK, they use the word accountants more than auditors. So a professional accountant is nothing but your auditor also. But do you know globally in many countries, including uh, the UK, including many countries in the Europe, audit is not compulsory for everyone. Even for companies also, some of the companies also audit is not compulsory. As you know, in India, audit is not compulsory for sole traders, partnership firms and all. Audit is compulsory for companies and uh, societies, banks. Audit is compulsory for certain categories of organizations, but audit is not compulsory for certain other. If you take companies, audit is compulsory even if it is a small company in India, but globally it is not so. That is the reason many companies there have accountants but not the auditors. 
in the context of india if you are reading this particular paragraph in the context of india instead of using the word accountant you can use the word auditor so the firm of accountant becomes firm of auditors firm of accountants becomes firm of auditors you understand it now what they are saying this particular judgment is given in the context of hmrc so in india we call it uh, you know the nomenclature is different but more or less how we operate is same we call income tax department we call gst department previously service tax department vat department and all isn't it isn't it globally or especially in the uk they call it uh, hmrc okay hmrc is nothing but like our income tax department their uh, uh, home office we call it point number 1 point number 2 in india we call ministry of corporate affairs we call registrar of companies in uk or europe they call them uh, like you know company house they call it company house now let us understand what this is imagine i am a chartered accountant imagine i am conducting audit of x limited during the course of audit x limited might have submitted so many papers to me during the audit i might have prepared so many papers now imagine there are two documents in my file my file auditor file there are two documents one document is prepared by the client and given to me second document is prepared by me for example for example fixed assets schedule and depreciation i asked the client hey can you give me your fixed assets schedule along with the depreciation depreciation computation the client said definitely pawan sir you are the auditor take this file so that paper i have taken print out and i kept it in my file that print out i kept it in file this is also audit evidence this is also documentation then i have calculated certain computations okay plant and machinery okay on the so and so date this is the opening wdv then i took additions then i took deletions then i calculated proportionately what is the depreciation on additions what is the depreciation on deletions all these things i have done okay after doing all these things i have put that paper also in my file now the paper what i have prepared is brought into existence by the auditor this is the property of the auditor tomorrow client came and said pawan sir that x and company audit file whatever you have that belongs to me he said pawan sir i have given you 5 lakh rupees of audit remuneration so whatever the work you have done on my company belongs to me give me all those papers then the auditor can say my dear x limited please try to understand those papers which are brought into existence by me i worked they are my audit working papers they are my audit documentation i developed them i brought them into existence that is my damn property that is not your property that is my property i have calculated provisions i have calculated you know various computations i have done a lot of working all these things are auditor's property not client property client cannot demand give that paper to me no you request me if i like it if i feel there is no confidentiality or there is no any kind of threat or risk or loss and if i believe that okay there is nothing wrong in giving this copy to you i will make a xerox copy photocopy of this document and i'll give it to you then you enjoy it but you cannot demand dear auditor that is my paper you can request auditor sir could you please give that paper to me if i like your tone if i like your face if i like the request and if i feel it is okay i will make a copy available to you this is what we call the ownership of audit documentation so now through this chantry martin versus martin case study which is a decided case law in english in 1953 in the uk we learned that the 
audit documentation compiled by the auditor, audit working papers are the property of the auditor, are the property of the auditor. He is under no obligation to give this to the client. He is under no obligation to give this to the client. However, if the client requests and if the auditor is okay with that, the auditor may make a copy of this paper available to the client. You understand it? You understand it? Now, coming back, Pavan sir, what is this audit documentation? What is this audit documentation? Now, in the court, you might have seen so many cases. Maybe, probably in movies, you might have seen this. In movies, you might have seen this. There is a court case. Hero is there, villain is there, everybody is there, heroine is there, heroine's father is there, everybody is there in court scene. A typical drama. Then in the court, you know, one party says, do you have evidence of that? Do you have evidence of, of that? Evidence of so and so. If you tell something orally, it may or it may not be binding. So, in the context of audit also, what we have learnt, a written audit evidence is more reliable than oral audit evidence, isn't it? A written evidence is always more reliable than oral evidence. So, always try to keep everything in writing. Always try to keep everything in writing. So, audit documentation is nothing but a record of the audit evidence is collected and the procedures performed. So, imagine I have performed audit or you have performed audit. God forbid, just for the sake of example, I am telling you, in a court of law, someone is asking, the judge is asking, Pavan, have you conducted audit of X Limited? Yes, sir. Have you planned it properly? Yes, sir. Have you prepared audit program? Yes, sir. Is there any overall audit strategy? Yes, sir. Did you do risk analysis? Yes, sir. Did you consider what type of audit procedures are to be applied in a given situation? Yes, sir. Did you finalize using your judgment that this technique is to be applied in this particular situation? Yes, sir. Did you perform audit properly? Yes, sir. Did you do RAP risk assessment procedures? Yes, sir. Did you do FAP further audit procedures? Yes, sir. Did you apply compliance procedures? Yes, sir. Did you apply substantive procedures? Yes, sir. Did you supervise, direct and review the audit work and the audit teams? Yes, sir. Did you review the work before forming conclusions? Yes, sir. Did you apply various procedures, firm level procedures, audit level procedures, quality control procedures, leadership requirements, as given in SQC 1 and as given in various standards on audit. Yes, sir. Have you performed audit as per the standards given by the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India? Yes, sir. Have you performed audit exercising due professional skill and care and competence? Yes, sir. Did you exercise due diligence and professional skepticism while performing audit? Yes, sir. Were you negligent while conducting audit? No, sir. Were you careful? Yes, sir. Did you do all the procedures? Yes, sir. Did you form proper audit opinion? Yes, sir. Did you prepare audit report properly? Yes, sir. Did you give audit report in the lines required by statutory and various professional technical standards and requirements? Yes, sir. Did you issue audit report like that? Yes, sir. Did you ensure that all the paragraphs like CAM, you call it 701, key audit matter paragraph or, you know, emphasis on matter paragraph or other matter paragraph and all these contents, did you ensure that everything is proper? 
Yes, sir. Did you communicate properly with audit committee of the company? Yes, sir. Did you communicate properly with those charged with governance? Yes, sir. Did you obtain management representation letters? Yes, sir. Did you communicate with management properly? Yes, sir. Did you communicate key matters, whatever are to be communicated to those charged with governance, including significant deficiencies in the internal control? Yes, sir. How many questions you'll ask? Then the judge said, okay. Pavan, I agree that you have done all these things because you said yes, 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 yes to me. Can you prove it? Prove, prove, prove it. Then the golden statement and sentence comes. If it is documented, it is done. If it is not documented, you cannot to prove that it is done. So, my lord, take this file, open the file, right from how I assessed the risk, how I accepted the client, how I retained the client, from that SQC1 to the planning, to the execution, to the letter of engagement, to communicating with, you know, various parties, till planning and execution and review and everything including my audit report and subsequent events everything is properly documented in this file my lord documented in this file so a person who is having common sense and education who need not be the auditor who need not be an expert in these matters even if a person who is a layman as far as accounts and audit is concerned, if he takes this file, if he opens the file and if he reads the content, this should give enough adequate assurance that yes, this guy has done properly. This guy has done this properly. Say for example, I'm a chartered accountant. I do not know, you know, much of science. I'm not an expert in medical field. But don't you think if I read the case sheet of a particular patient, I, I have a file with me. So I opened what is the name of the patient, what is the age of the patient, what is the gender of the patient, what are the symptoms, what are the complications when he has seen the doctor, what diagnostics were applied, what tests were made, what are the lab results and then what is the medication, what is the follow-up, is there any procedure done, you know, like uh, surgery, what they have done, how they have done. If I read this file, don't you think, may not be 100%, may not be technical words, but except certain technical words, except the jargon where I do not have knowledge. Overall, even if I am a chartered accountant, even though I am a chartered accountant, don't you think I'll understand more or less Maybe with 80% confidence level, maybe with 70% confidence level, maybe with 85% confidence level, whether the procedure followed in the treatment is proper or no using my common sense. That is what documentation is. Even a third person who is not coming from the background should understand more or less what happened. And if the third party is also a chartered accountant or an experienced auditor, now again go back to this movies where this kind of scenes were there. In movies, this kind of scenes were there. One medical officer will come. Do you remember? One medical officer will come and the uh, advocate asks him, the lawyer asks him, have you done the post-mortem of this particular case? Yes, sir. Is this so and so? Yes, sir. So he is an expert. Sometimes some medical officers will come as a third party. So the lawyer asks, sir, do you think in this situation this is possible? They will give an opinion. They'll give an opinion. So if the person has jumped from 10th floor and died, how it will be? If he is shot by a bullet, how it will be? Okay, if he is killed by a knife, how it will be? If he is banged with a car and killed, how it will be? So, these kind of things they do. Simulations, experienced auditor. 
So even here experienced auditor will be able to understand everything looking at the audit documentation. So basically audit documentation is a file which consists of all the papers. Like you know, when you are an article assistant, you have got a new client. There is something called client onboarding. Isn't it? There is something called client onboarding. So if I am your senior auditor, I am your principal auditor, you are my article assistant. You are my article assistant. So I called you and I said, hey, Srinivas, we have got a new client. This is X limited. Do the KYC. Do the KYC. I said, do the KYC. So my article assistant said, okay, yes, sir. I'll do that. So he has prepared one file and he came to me. Okay, then I opened the file to verify whether he has done KYC properly or no. So in that, in that audit documentation file, what are all, you know, documents are expected to be there? Certificate of incorporation, certificate of commencement of the business, share issue certificates, communication with stock markets, if it is a listed company, communication with the registrar of uh, companies, then it's... Uh, annual reports this it's audit reports previous year financial statements previous year audit reports then communication with bank and pan card or aadhar card or directors director identification number then you know directors kyc uh, money laundering anti money laundering checks these are basic things right then internal control systems then organization structure then the business segments what they are doing what they are into all these things will be there in the folder right then i said srinivas excellent let us conduct audit after completion of the audit we have to finalize this file and we need to create separate folders for temporary data permanent data which is a very important question in the exam point of view from exam point of view so what are the contents of uh, permanent file what are the contents of temporary file simple what are you know permanent data in this tell me pan card do you think pan card of company will change every year certificate of incorporation share certificates memorandum of association articles of association previous year financial statements previous year audit reports okay then uh, registration with vat authorities gst authorities do you think these kind of things will change no if they do not change they are permanent uh, anything that relates to the current year audit you will put it in current file anything that is permanent and will not change you will put it in the permanent file that's all full stop so isn't it easy to understand auditing from this point of view you understand now think about it you are my article assistant i am the principal auditor there is a team of five people a b c d and e so i called all the five i have sent them to conduct audit of x limited so from power and company five member team a b c d e these people went to x limited performed audit for 15 days came back okay in this ABCDE, one chartered accountant is also there who is a team leader. Then there are articled assistants, paid assistants. So this is a combination of uh, different people who performed audit. They came back to me. They came back to me. Pavan sir, we have completed audit, Pavan sir. Okay. Now, what am I supposed to do? Will I sign my audit report? Are you kidding me? They will put me in jail. So, what am I expected to do now? What am I expected to do now? I will ask, Dear Mr. A, what did you do? Sir, you asked me to verify purchases. I have verified purchases. Okay. Have you documented everything? Yes, sir. Working papers. Yes, sir. Put it there. Hey, Mr. B, what did you do? Sir, you asked me to verify sales. Did you do that? Yes, sir. Did you make working papers? Yes, sir. So if at all there, is, there are any lapses like, you know, you couldn't find uh, uh, some invoices or there are some differences in collections, then goods received notes or goods dispatched notes, something. So have you noted down all the things? Yes, sir. So have you inquired the management why these differences are? Yes, sir. So have you traced all the relevant documents? Yes, sir. Have you performed a walkthrough test, audit trail? Yes, sir. 
have you documented it yes sir keep it on the table then miss c what did you do sir i have verified fixed assets sir put the file so all these documents whatever a b c d e worked on are on my table i will go through that and i will further investigate if it is required then i will go to the client i will do the ledger scrutiny i will do you know the scrutiny of financial statements i look at the financial reporting framework i do sampling i do reviews i apply analytical procedures i verify provisions i verify compliances various things i verify after that i will finalize the audit when i am finalizing the audit at the review stage if the client is big i will ask one of my partner level friends who is also competent having qualification and experience or an external party to conduct a hot review there are two types of reviews hot review and cold review so i'll ask them to conduct a hot review cold review is something like your peer review after issue of audit report whatever you do that will be a cold review that is for quality purpose but hot review will affect audit report so then my friend who is also a chartered accountant who has experience and all he verified everything and said pavan everything seems to be good pavan you can go ahead and prepare audit report and you can sign then i will prepare audit report and sign unfortunately in some of the firms audit reports are prepared by articled assistants no comments have you prepared audit reports yep but that is the role of auditor no so it it cannot be like you know you have you have taken uh, the resume of your friend change name mother name father name and then it has become your resume audit reports can never be prepared like that okay you cannot have a pro forma change the name change the numbers and then it becomes the audit report of new company are you kidding me are you kidding me either icai will screw your happiness one day or on the day of judgment god will ask you hey hey come rubber manda how you prepared audit report of x limited sir sorry sir sorry sir even if icai will leave you on the day of judgment god will catch your call and ask hey you have done article ship prepared audit report how you prepared how, how you prepared sir sir sorry sir so this is what actually the purpose of audit documentation is okay now quickly within 5 minutes shall we see what are the requirements what icai wants from this you know audit documentation so look here on the extreme left hand side scope of the standard so every standard will have a scope and objective so what is the scope here this standard deals with the auditor's responsibility okay my dear auditor you are responsible for something okay my lord what is my responsibility to prepare oh that means preparation of audit documentation for audit of financial statements is the responsibility of the auditor okay then comes the objective put a star mark there are two objectives one sufficient appropriate record of the basis of auditor report what is the record of basis of audit report oh my god underline audit evidence have you collected sufficient appropriate audit evidence yes audit documentation provides this to prepare audit documentation that provides sufficient appropriate record for the basis of auditor report what is basis of audit report evidence evidence is the basis of audit report or lack of evidence is also the basis evidence you can use clean report lack of evidence either you can go with uh, you know this uh, adverse report or qualified report then b evidence that the audit was planned and performed in accordance with standards on auditing in accordance with legal requirements in accordance with regulatory requirements what is legal requirement companies act banking regulation act what is regulatory requirement sebi rbi ica irda so whether audit is done according to these standards whether audit is planned and performed yes that is the object okay now definitions there are three definitions one audit documentation it is record of audit procedures performed relevant audit evidence obtained 
conclusions the auditor reached so one in audit documentation what all will be there the record in this record what all will be there one what are the audit procedures performed okay what is the audit evidence obtained okay what conclusions are drawn based on one and two one procedure when you apply procedure two you obtain evidence three after obtaining evidence what is the conclusion you have drawn pavan sir i have performed physical verification of cash okay that is step 1 what did you get as per the books 252000 is there physical cash 251992 rupees is there 8 rupees is missing upon sir okay this is step 2 step 3 what conclusion you have drawn i think 8 rupees is not material so i can say that cash balance is matching with cash book balance physical cash balance is matching with cash book very good these three things right on paper that is audit documentation one procedure performed two evidence collected three conclusion drawn now tell me if you learn auditing like this do you think you will forget this in your life never theory paper always you should learn through a practical approach using something called visualization then you'll never forget you don't need to buy hot okay you can play football with the concepts okay just like that when i am writing acca i have written acca f8 paper can you believe i did not even read for 5 hours 100 marks paper i did not even read for 5 hours i went i wrote the exam and i came i missed all india first all india first with 3 marks but pavan sir by the time already you are chartered accountant already you are cost accountant already you are teaching auditing you have done audit for so many companies you are a professional chartered accountant have some shame pavan sir after these many qualifications who will write acc who will write but my point my point here is if you understand the crux if you understand the core if you understand the heart of the theory you don't need to buy hot it just go express yourself but you should have proper terminology your terminology should be good that's it then another definition what is audit file audit file audit file can be in electronic mode nowadays audit files are in your laptop so it is basically x limited audit for 2023 folder when you click the folder so many subfolders will be there correct in subfolders content will be there data will be there so that relates to x limited that relates to you know one particular year permanent file also will be there but this you know major part of audit documentation comes from the current year audit one or more folders can it be a physical folder box file yes can it be electronic folder in my computer yes it can be other storage medium it can be in physical form it can be in electronic form it can be in a pen drive it can be in google drive it can be in your laptop containing the records what records abo records abo records that comprise the audit documentation for a specific engagement what is the specific engagement x limited audit this is audit file simple experienced auditor who is experienced auditor do you remember i told you in case of that court one guy is coming with the specs and all medical officer like that this guy is experienced auditor an individual who has practical experience oh you are a practitioner yes plus reasonable understanding you have reasonable understand actually it cannot be reasonable reasonable here means reasonable assurance is a very high level assurance isn't it so here also reasonable doesn't mean he understand auditing no he is an expert in these areas he is a very level guy top guy he can be experienced auditor 
So he has reasonable understanding. That means high level understanding. What he should understand: auditing process, standards and auditing, legal requirements, regulatory requirements, business environment, industry, economy, financial reporting. All these things he should understand. So an individual who has practical experience and understanding of audit processes, CSA, legal requirement, regulatory requirement, business environment. Auditing and financial reporting issues. So all these things, if you know with reasonable understanding, which is high level, then my dear friend, you are experienced auditor. Yeah, you understand. Now, form and content of form, content and extent of audit documentation. Theory, which is basic, fundamental, important from exam point of view. So. You know, what are the contents in my audit documentation file? This already I gave you with the help of these examples. Whatever, you know, the last 30 minutes we studied, I taught you. By this time, you should understand what are the contents. So I'll read this one. The auditor shall prepare audit documentation on a timely basis. Okay. The auditor shall prepare audit documentation that is sufficient to enable to an experienced auditor having no previous connection with the audit to understand oh my god what 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 repeat read again so <clears throat> imagine you have performed x limited audit you have performed X limited audit. Okay. I am experienced auditor. I, I did not do X limited audit. I do not have any connection with X limited audit. Just now I walked in. I asked you, hey, did you perform X limited audit? Yes, sir. Give me the documents. An experienced auditor having no connection with the audit. Experienced auditor having no connection with the audit should be able to understand certain things looking at this file. So what this file should contain? This file should contain the records which will enable an experienced auditor to understand. Experienced auditor, no connection with the audit. But this file should make me, help me, enable me to understand what one nature timing and extent of audit procedures performed audit planning results of the audit procedures performed and the audit evidence obtained again again one two three do you remember one two three step one step two step three step one audit procedure applied step two evidence collected step three opinion conclusion same thing this is audit procedures performed this is results obtained and audit evidence obtained then three significant matters Conclusions reached and the professional judgments made. Simple. One, two, three. See how connected the wordings are. How easy it is to study. The students ask me, Pawan sir, did you get 90s in theory papers in CACW? How? You should understand the concepts and you should communicate in the language what ICA wants you to communicate. Simple. Then you, get, you can easily get 90s. Three, in documenting the nature, timing and extent of audit procedures performed. Oh my God, they are speaking about A. Audit procedures performed A. So, in documenting that, the auditor should, one, identify characteristics of specific items. Who performed the audit work? Date such work was completed who reviewed the work, who performed and the date and extent of such review. Simple, simple. What is the category? Audit of assets. What are the risks identified? What are the processes applied? What is the sample size? What is the inherent risk control risk and detection risk? A. B. Who has done that? C. Who reviewed that? Katam. How simple it is. All these things should be documented. So again coming back. 
Pavan, an experienced auditor, having no connection with X Limited, you are the auditor who performed X Limited audit. You gave this file to me. I opened the file. I am flipping the pages. Okay. Audit of fixed assets. This is how it is planned. These are the characteristics. Okay. Who performed this? Okay, this guy performed. How he performed? This, this, this. What are the documents prepared? This, this. What is the evidence obtained? This, this. Okay, very good. Who reviewed this? This guy. Whether the person reviewed is superior in knowledge and authority than the person who performed? Yes. Prepared by first year article assistant, reviewed by third year article assistant. Fair enough. Prepared by third year article assistant and reviewed by chartered accountant. Fair enough. Prepared by chartered accountant, paid assistant, reviewed by partner. Fair enough. Prepared by partner, reviewed by external chartered accountant who is a consultant, expert. Very good. Perfect. Now the experienced auditor will close the file and tell the judge, my lord, this guy has performed audit of X Limited in an excellent manner in which ICAI or ACCA or AICPA or SEMA or ICAEW expect a professional auditor to perform. How they expected, how the companies had to want this guy to perform the audit. He has done exactly in those lines. How how ICI wanted this guy to perform audit. He has done it like that. How I came to that conclusion? Looking at this file. What is this file? Audit documentation. Then, departure from relevant requirements. What is this? Departure from relevant requirements. Pavan sir, can I depart from relevant requirement? The answer is 99% no. Try to understand. In India, in India, in India, audit is principle based, rule based. In India, audit is rule based or we can say compliance based. Compliance based, rule based or compliance based. Globally, especially when you look at uh, audit in the UK, audit in the US, audits are not rule based. They are principle based. So, ICI will tell you, company Sactil will tell you, hey, 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 do this. If you do not do this, I will cut your legs from tomorrow wheelchair. Do this. This is rule based. When you go to ACCA or ICIW or AICPA, they will tell you, probably this is an appropriate way of doing this. Having said that, if you want, if you feel so, if you can demonstrate, if you can prove that alternative procedure is better in this situation, you can do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. So, they will not tell you that, hey, auditor, do it like this. This is the rule. If it is rule, it should be complied with. It is not rule. It is principle there. But who prepares all this essay? Do you think I see No. All these things are coming from ISA. ISA. International Standard and Audit. That is developed, developed by developed countries. Isn't it? Isn't it? So even today, in India, sitting in Mumbai or sitting in Hyderabad, sitting in Kerala, what you are doing? What has been written in London? That we are following. ISA is prepared by that International Auditing and Assurance Standard Board, IAASB. That is taken by Indian Auditing and Assurance Standard Board. They will say there is a detailed procedure. We do this, this. Hello, hello. I know all this procedure, but almost it is copy paste of same. So you read Standard and Audit, you read International Standard and Audit. 99% content will be same. That is the reason countries like Pakistan and Bangladesh, they do not even apply their brain. Okay. They say, 
IFRS is there. Huh? Chalo, Xerox laga. Okay, as it is, they'll take the Xerox and they say, this is our domestic standard. This is our domestic accounting standard. This is our domestic auditing standard. As it is, copy paste. Why using brain anyway, you are using that one. But ICA says, India says, hello, hello. no, 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 no. No, no. We will not do that. First, we will take international standard. Para 1, copy, paste it here. Para 2, copy, paste it here. Para 3, copy, wait. Here, I want to change this particular phrase. Okay. I want to add something. I want to subtract something. Considering my economy. Considering my industry. Considering my customs. Considering my legal and economic environment. Considering my business. Are bhai, whatever you want. Right. So the whole standard, if you look at it, is copy paste with 2%, 1% variation. This 2%, 1% variation in terms of IFRS and in the US, it is called Carvin carve out. It is called Carvin carve out. Minor differences. So departure from relevant requirement, that means globally, it can be huge. In India, it can be very little. And the matters arising after the date of audit report. Eh? After the date of audit report also matters will arise. Yeah, subsequent events. Subsequent events. What they said? Read point number one. If, what is this? Exceptional circumstance. That means ICI is telling you, Ray, listen, follow as it is. Okay, sir. In exceptional circumstance, if auditor's judgmental ability requires or necessitates to depart from relevance. Who will have guts enough to think like this and go against ICI? So, in India, auditor said, Dear ICI, Namaste, we will not fight with you. Whatever you have written, copy paste, we will do. Thank you. But if there is any guy with iron nerves and he said, Hey, my metal, my muzzle, my knowledge, in auditing is different. I made juice of audit standards and I swallowed. I am challenging that in this situation, this is required, which is a departure from standard on auditing. Okay. Then ICI will ask, oh, hello, hello, Pavan, Pavan, we understand your knowledge. We understand you are challenging the situation. You are challenging the guidance given in standard on auditing, principles given in standard on auditing, rules framed by ICI. But do you know what are the consequences? I know. I know the consequences. I know the professional ethics. But even then, I believe this is required. This deviation is required. Okay. If we can prove that, I can prove that. Then go ahead. That means the probability for this particular paragraph is 0.1%. Normal people will not fight with ICA. Auditor judges it necessary to depart from standard and auditing. Then the auditor shall document the alternative audit procedures performed. So, Pavan, did you perform this audit as given in ICI procedures? As given in standard and auditing? No, I did alternative procedure. They said, follow procedure A. I followed procedure B. What is procedure B? document. Why you have done that document? What is the reason for a departure? Document. That's all. That is first point. Second point. The auditor performs new procedure or additional procedure. You have done new procedure or additional procedure or draws new conclusion. Already you made a conclusion and gave audit report. Now you have drawn new conclusion. Previously, I said so in audit report. Now, I changed it after the date of audit report. Why? Don't you think it is also exceptional circumstance? Once the audit report is issued, who will change? I might have seen thousands of audit reports, but after issuing audit report, you will not change anything. If at all you are changing, that is extremely sensitive situation 
or what I can say exceptional circumstance that will create, you know, nonsense in industry that will create nonsense in the stock markets. Normally, no one does that, but there could be a situation. So if this is the situation, the auditor shall document circumstances. What are the circumstances? What are the new procedures, additional procedures? What is the effect on audit report? When and by whom the resulting changes to audit documentation were made and reviewed? All these things you need to document. That's all. Then the last thing, very, very, very important from exam point of view. Within 60 days from the date of the audit report, you should complete assembling audit file because you have, say, for example, 700 papers, for example, 700 papers. The 700 papers belong to different, different, different folders. So collect it, sort it, store it, keep it like this. So this assembly, I see, I said, dear auditor, we understand you are a busy guy. Okay. We understand you are doing 100 audits simultaneously. Dear auditor, we understand, we understand you are into so many things right now. Yes. Audit reports are over. September 30th. AGMs. After that, are you free now? Yeah. Take 60 days time from the date of signing audit report. Sort all the documents properly. Put it in audit file. And you need to protect them, maintain them, store them for a period of not less than seven years from the date of audit report. Seven years. This, these two are very, very, very important MCQs. One, 60 days from the date of audit report is given for you to sort, complete the assembling of file. From the date of audit report, 60 days. From the date of audit report, 7 years is the minimum period you need to. Some of the students will write 8 years. Beta 8 years is for company books of account. Some students will write 10 years. That is old, old um, time frame. SQC 1 revised gives you that not less than, not shorter than 7 years. This audit documents should be protected. That's it. So read this three, the auditor shall complete the assembly of final audit file within a period not more than 60 days after the date of audit report. Okay. After the assembly of final audit file is completed, the auditor shall not delete or discard the audit documentation. Underline this. Very, 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 very important. I'll give you one thing to da, 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 dig on. Now we have big four, right? EY, PWC, KPM, right? Do you know previously there were big five? Now we have big four. Previously there was big five. There was an audit firm which is bigger than this four. Okay. Anderson and Company. Arthur Anderson and Company. So there is a very famous case, very famous scam called uh, Enron. Okay. Enron. Then Lehman, these are, you know, big, big case studies in the history. This is a classic example on what not to be done with audit evidence. What not to be done with audit evidence. They try to tamper the, the allegation. The allegation. Did they do that? God knows. But finally, Supreme Court has given in favor of the audit firm. But by the time they stopped trading, they stopped, you know, they liquidated. Some parts of the business were taken over by KPMG. Some parts were demerged. Today, we have Accenture in India. No, that Accenture, not in India, a global company. That Accenture is a spin-off, demerger part of this firm. That means look at the firm, how big their consulting is. So, my dear friend, don't delete audit report, the audit evidence. Don't delete audit documents. Don't discard. Before the end of its retention period, which is seven years and above, if the auditor find it necessary to modify, eh? Pavan sir, can I modify? Can I 
include some more data hey, wait wait why are you doing that first give me the reason what is the reason for such change when and by whom these are made when and by whom these are reviewed so what ici is saying once the audit documentation is prepared don't touch it don't touch it store it for 7 years or more sort it within 60 days put audit file properly yes sir assembling is done yes sir 7 years protect it don't delete it don't discard it don't touch it okay sir if at all you are including anything new in the file or if at all you are making any changes to the file you have to write one what is the reason for that two who did that three who reviewed that that's all ladies and gentlemen this is sa230 from you for you from me any doubts any doubts in whatever we have discussed